Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Good morning. Our opening hymn is number 611, For the Beauty of the Earth. <clears throat> for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and villain, tree and flower, sun and moon and the stars of light. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause. We ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Absalom unexpectedly came up against David's servants. He was mounted on a mule, and as the mule passed under the branches of a large terebinth, his hair caught fast in the tree. He hung between heaven and earth while the mule he had been riding ran off. Someone saw this and reported to Joab, that he had seen Absalom hanging from a terebinth, and taking three pikes in hand, he thrust for the heart of Absalom, still hanging from the tree alive. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and a lookout went up to the roof of the gate above the city wall, where he looked about and saw a man running all alone. The lookout shouted to inform the king, who said, if he is alone, he has good news to report. The king said, Step aside and remain in attendance here. So he stepped aside and remained there. When the Cushite messenger came in, he said, Let my lord the king receive the good news that this day the lord has taken your part, freeing you from the grasp of all who rebelled against you. But the king asked the Cushite, is young Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rebel against you with evil intent be as that young man. 
The king was shaken and went up to the room over the city gate to weep. He said as he wept, My son Absalom, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Absalom, my son, my son. Joab was told that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom, and that day's victory was turned into mourning for the whole army when they heard that the king was grieving for his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, listen, Lord, and answer me. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Incline your ear, O Lord, answer me, for I am afflicted and poor. Keep my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Listen, Listen, Lord, Lord, and answer answer me. me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for to you I call all the day. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen, Listen, Lord, Lord, and answer answer me. me. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Listen, Listen, Lord, Lord, and answer answer me. me. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Lord is you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at point of death. Please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for 20 years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue officials arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. 
So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him, and he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where she was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha no komen, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> As I was growing up and listening to the Gospels, I imagined that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were always following Jesus around with notebook and pen and taking down everything that was happening uh, as it happened. And um, it wasn't quite like that. We're hearing an awful lot from Mark's gospel these days, uh, day after day. Uh, who was Mark? Was he a follower of Jesus? Did he know Jesus personally? Um, an ancient historian by the name of Papio says that Mark was a disciple of Peter. So undoubtedly he got an awful lot of his information from Peter. But he's writing this gospel about 30 years after the death of Jesus. Uh, whatever he knew, even if it was a personal witness, you know, after 30 years your memory kind of fades. And so you remember brief details. One of my hobbies, uh, which I started in 1968, is whenever I go on a vacation, I take a little notebook along and I keep track of a few things, and then when I get back home, I'll spend from 10 o'clock until midnight at the computer or typewriter, typing up everything I remember, and then add my pictures and have it published in the book. And it's kind of fun to go back 30, 40, or 50 years and read what you paid for a motel back in those days or a campsite or what, what dinners cost in those days and compare those things to today. Uh, well, maybe... Uh, Mark got some of his information from Peter, uh, and some of it's from um, other sources, uh, some from liturgical practice of the time. But he wrote the first gospel around the year 60, 64 AD, thereabouts. Uh, and um, so it gives us a brief outline of what Jesus did. Uh, but it's very vague. Uh, Jesus went here, and in today's gospel, he cured the woman who had been ill for 12 years. And then uh, the daughter of Jairus came and said, my daughter is ill. And he went and raised her back to life. Uh, and on and on he goes. But one of the things about Mark, as vague as he is, uh, every once in a while he has uh, little details that add something to the touch of the story. Uh, like when Jesus feeds the 5,000, I think Mark has a, that they, they gathered and sat down like a little flower beds or something like that. And today, he has an interesting little detail in the, uh, at the end of the gospel. Uh, first of all, Jesus cured the woman who was ill for 12 years. And then um, the Jairus comes up and says, My daughter is ill. Would you come and pray for her? And Jesus is ready to go. And friends of the man come and say, No need to bother the teacher. Um, her daughter has died. Can you imagine the roller coaster of emotions, worried about the daughter and then hearing the news that she had died? But Jesus goes along and says, you know, uh, have faith, fear is useless. And uh, when he gets there, there's a big crowd of mourners already, and Jesus kind of chides them and said, the daughter is not dead. And they think, you know, they make fun of him. And then Jesus takes the parents in, and he calls the little girl by name and calls her back to life. Uh, again, can you imagine the emotions from, first of all, worry and concern, sorrow at the daughter's death, and then this incredible event, she's brought back to life. Um, it's interesting to think about that. And then um, an interesting little detail. First of all, Jesus says, don't tell anybody. Well, how do you not tell anybody? I think there's a special... We see that often in Mark's Gospel. He cures a leper... Don't tell anybody. Here's a blind man. Don't tell anybody. 
What are you supposed to do? Pretend you're blind even when you can see? No, you go tell everybody. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But then the part of the gospel I like is after he raises the daughter back to life, he says to the parents, give her something to eat. And their excitement, and their enthusiasm, and their rejoicing, you know, that might have been the farthest thing from their mind that the little girl might be hungry. But Jesus not only raised her to life, but he says to the parents, take care of her, give her something to eat. And maybe that's a lesson for us too. Sometimes it's the little things we do for others that are just as important as the tremendous things we might do. But that part, don't tell anybody. I wonder if Mark's way of saying, you know, these are great events and naturally you go out and tell everybody when you receive your sight again, when you're crippled and suddenly you can walk, when you're dead and you're brought back to life. But maybe Mark is saying to all of us as readers, you know, God has done such incredible things for us. He died on the cross for us, the Son of God, rose from the dead. Do we ever go out and tell anybody about this? Do we get excited about it? Uh, are we enthusiastic about sharing our faith? Or do we just keep quiet all the time and just come to church and pray quietly? But do we ever talk about our faith? Maybe in a subliminal way, Mark is saying to all of us, we need to go out and tell the good news of all that God has done for us and continues to do for us and what he promises to do for us for all eternity in heaven. So that's something for us to reflect upon too. And maybe the best place to begin is with your grandchildren or great-grandchildren. Talk about Jesus, tell them how much your faith means to you and what a difference it makes in your life, and in this way share your faith with the younger generation growing up. So with that in mind, let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you truly have done incredible things for us. You created the universe, and then you created us. And not only that, you sent your Son Jesus to die on the cross for us to make eternal life possible for us. Help us to listen to the wonders of your work for us, and then go out and share the good news with others. Grant us this, Lord, in the favors we ask in Jesus' name. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop George Lucas, Bishop Conley, and Bishop Hannafel, and for all leaders in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Supreme Court justices, that they will rule in favor of protecting the lives of the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For school programs throughout the state of Nebraska and across the nation, that they will stress the practice of the virtue of chastity as a better choice than choosing to have an abortion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents and who are the first and most important teachers of their children in the ways of the faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that they may experience the healing presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may come to know the joys of eternal life with our risen Lord and Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the doctors and nurses who are working long hours in the hospitals, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our needs and intentions, let us now pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Linda Formanak, who will be buried from Holy Family Church in Lindsay on Friday, and for Richard Potts, uh, who died this past weekend, and for his family, we pray to the Lord. And we offer this Mass today for Ardent Hayes. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. <clears throat> A 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with every blessing and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in the presence of countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we took, we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under the heavens as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and love. You form man in your own image and entrust the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who might, find, find, might seek you might find you. Time and time again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you shall love the world, Father, most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only beloved Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits to the, for those who believe, so that, bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. And therefore, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, 
which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved those who were in his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death, his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and this one chalice, that gathered into the one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. And therefore, Lord, remember now all those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who, are, who uh, seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also, Lord, those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. There, with the holy creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done. on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 363. Lord, who at that first Eucharist? <clears throat> Lord, who at thy first Eucharist did pray that all thy church might be forever one. Grant us that every Eucharist to say with longing heart and soul thy will be done. Oh, may we all one bread, one body be. Through this blessed sacrament of unity, for all thy church, O Lord, we intercede. Make thou our sad division soon to cease. Draw us the nearer each to each we plead by drawing all to thee, O Prince of Peace. Thus may we all one bread, one body be through this blessed sacrament of unity.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And our final hymn is number 620, Like a Shepherd. <clears throat> Like a shepherd he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. Say to the cities of Judah, Prepare the way of the Lord. Go to the mountain top, lift your voice. Jerusalem, here is your God. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock, gathers the lambs in his arms. Holding them carefully close to his heart, leading them home. I myself will shepherd them, for others have led them astray. The lost I will rescue and heal their wounds and pastor them, giving them rest. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock, gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully close to his heart. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.